All right, freshmen, this is the Cold War notes for day 10. So this would be uh, the notes for Tuesday for those who are temporarily virtual or all virtual. All right, so when we uh, left Vietnam, uh, and again, I can remember this because I'm a, a 1978 born, and so uh, an 80s baby. And uh, when we left Vietnam in 1973, and then when the uh, country fell in 1975, we just became very reluctant uh, to send our forces anywhere. Um, we, uh, we would ask all the time, you know, is this going to be another Vietnam? Um, we kind of, it took us a while to get out of that. It really took us uh, to the uh, fighting in the Persian Gulf War in 1991 and then eventually 9-11 to kind of get us out of the mentality of, is it going to be another Vietnam? But for a long time, we were just very uh, hesitant to get involved in world affairs because of it. Uh, 1973, we also got rid of the draft, uh, which had been in effect since uh, 1951. It had been reinstated in 1951, actually 1948. Uh, but <clears throat> anyway, the draft had been going on for 20 years, uh, even during the peacetime. And uh, we had a lot of men who were drafted who did not necessarily want to be there. So uh, we got rid of the draft. We went to the all-volunteer army. And uh, to a person, when you ask military people today, um, you know, is the, would they ever want to go back to the draft? And they would say no, uh, because then you're bringing people in uh, who don't necessarily want to be there. And with the all-volunteer army, at least you have people who volunteered to sign up and, and clearly want to be there. All right, so under Nixon, we have a new policy called détente, which means relaxation in French. And remember, uh, Nixon was trying to uh, end the war in Vietnam. So part of this was out of that, but also part of it was the fact that, um, you know, we had not been talking to uh, China in 30 years. We really had almost no conversations. The Soviet Union, uh, it had been on and off, you know, on and off good relations and bad relations. So in 1970, I think it was 71, our... Uh, table tennis team. Remember, it's called uh, table tennis on the professional level, but if you play it in your rec room, it's called ping pong. Uh, our table tennis team was at a tournament, and the captain, I guess, of our team walked uh, on onto the wrong bus. He walked onto the Chinese team bus, and he and the Chinese captain uh, kind of had a conversation, and uh, they exchanged shirts or something and said, you know, we should play each other. And so that became known as what was called ping pong diplomacy. Um, we will send our team to play the Chinese table tennis team in China, which if you've seen Forrest Gump, that's part of it. And then we will uh, host the Chinese team coming over to America, uh, who will again play us. And just so you know, we, we got beat pretty bad. Chinese are very good at table tennis. So um, this was not a competitive match. But the fact is, is it was a breakthrough in uh, diplomacy. So uh, Nixon will visit China. In 1972, as you can see there, visiting the Great Wall. And then the next month, he will visit the Soviet Union, and that's him talking to Leonid Brezhnev, okay? 1972 also sees the signing of the SALT Treaty, Strategic Arms Limitation Talks, and it limits nuclear weapons, and also it's an agreement to more trade and more sharing of information. And so this detente program seems to be working because tensions are going to drop significantly during the 70s. All right, after that, we get Gerald Ford, Right here, he will pardon Nixon after Watergate. He will continue the policy of detente, and he'll even have a meeting in Finland with the Soviets uh, and sign the Helsinki Accords, which will focus on continuing to decrease tensions. Now, when Jimmy Carter takes office in 1976, a little different story. Um, Carter was very much focused on human rights. Um, he told the Soviet Union that you know he wanted to keep relations going, but he also wanted them to. Um, you know, work on their treatment of people, which did not go over well, as you can imagine, because Soviet Union didn't like being told what to do. Um, Carter will give away control of the Panama Canal uh, to the Panamanians. And then in 1979, uh, the Soviets will invade Afghanistan, okay? Now, the official story was the Afghani government was supported by the Soviet Union, and they were dealing with a possible coup, so the Soviets came in to protect them. In reality, we think it was just the Soviets trying to flex their muscles and take more territory. Uh, so the fighting in Afghanistan will pick up, and it will actually lead Carter to uh, pull us out of the 1980 Summer Olympics, the only time we didn't go to an Olympics because of political issues. And then we also have 1979, the Iranian hostage situation, uh, which was part of the plot of the movie Argo, and we'll talk more about that when we get to the war on terror. So um, the detente policy really ends with Carter. All right, here's your questions. What was the long-term effect of the Vietnam War? How did detente change relations between the U.S. and Soviet Union? Three, what was ping pong diplomacy? Four, what was salt? Okay.